Okay, you're right. Okay, I'm gonna, yep. I'll come show you the Tar Sweat Lodge. It's a bear lodge that I keep, keeper of. It's the people's lodge, eh? Our sacred fire, we make fire, we heat up our grandfathers here. And there's our protector here, our scabby. In case the scabby, we don't got no scabby that comes in the fire, in the, in the sweat lodge with us. So this is our protector, he keeps all the evil, the bad spirits are from coming into our lodge. He, 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 in case sometimes our scabby doesn't, he wants to come in too, he, we're allowed to let him in. Yeah. So we just let him come in, we, he comes in, that's our protector. He, he's, just as, he's just as strong as me and you and uh, for keeping people away from people. So this is our lodge and there's some grandfathers here that we they we've collected over the years. They're protectors. Other people bring their rocks. There's one, there's two, there's a couple more, there's a couple of small ones underneath, but I don't I don't dig them out. I just let nature take its course. I'll write them up sometime for lodges. Mm -hmm. But anyways, this is the lodge where we're going. In here, oh, I'll go sit on this side, put it here. Or we come in here, how far is the light good? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, usually, I got 17 grandfathers. Well, if we first come in, we bring four in for the four directions and the four elements of life. And after we smoke, we will then I'll smoke my pipe in here, ask the grandfathers that people might need inside this lodge, you know, the helpers. I'll call them in to be, be with us. You know, then after I smoke our pipe, we'll call, I'll call the, I'll call our scabby, bring us, bring us seven more in for our seven, for the seven teachings. Then we'll, then we'll shut the door. Then we'll start our songs. We will we'll start our usually start our ceremonies off in, in this lodge because it's a bear song. We acknowledge the bear first song. We'll do the bear song. And then we'll let people share if they have to share. Bring what why the purpose of why they're inside this lodge. And it's usually because they're weak or they're hurting. They need help. You know, in life, there's hurdles that we must follow, jump over each day. So the bear gives us that courage to. Jump over them, over them hurdles. Not stay behind them and dwindling, dwindling in our in our in our hurts. We'll do this. We'll do two rounds of sharing. Some other people will, might might speak. Some of them might not. But it's the freedom. It's free. What you gonna do? We humble ourselves. That's why we walk on you know, our our four, our four. We crawl on our four, just like we go there down to Mother Earth and we ask Mother Earth to help us also in this lodge. We come in here. We do. We'll do four, four, four rounds that in two songs per round, and all depends on the grandfather. We let the grandfather tell us. And when we come in this lodge, you know, it's sometimes we we might, you know, some people might say, "Well, what we're going in the lodge for something?" You know, they, they might need. I might, and I think about that when I walk in, the, walking in the bush picking up the medicines, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and uh, I know what it's like, so this person's having this problem, so I'm thinking at the same time, praying, same time asking the grandfathers the help that they might need. And I'm thinking, all, oh yeah, I'll, 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 so that's what I'll say in the lodge. Then after I smoke my pipe, you know, none of them stuff that I think of before comes in the lodge, because the grandfathers speak through me when, I, when he tells me to speak. I'll say totally different things with what I was thinking of saying, like preparing something myself for a speech or, or something like that. But the grandfathers, you know, they, they tell me what to say in this law, law. Whatever comes out of my mouth is from the grandfathers, and uh, they tell me what what the people need and the people want to hear. So I do I do that, and I do I call on the grandfather. I got my I got my pipe and I got my rattle. The pipe goes back out after I finish smoking pipe, but I got my rattle and my drums and all that. And my rattle is the it's my my signaler to let the people. Let the, their helpers to come in the lodge because I don't know all the people's helpers that come in the lodge. Everybody's got spiritual helpers. Like I got the wolf, I got the, I got the eagle, and I got the sabi that helped me in my walk. 
So I know mine, but I don't know all these other, other, all my other brothers and sisters are helpers. So that rattle knows. I shake my rattle, I call them, and the, and the grandfathers, the, the ones that need help, they'll, they'll come in this lodge to help, to help them. So let let go, release their their hurts that they need in this lodge. This lodge, I, I started this lodge because my son is vision. My son, this is my son uh, David, Medicine Bear. His 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 vision. That wasn't my vision. He, he visited the lodge, and uh, my dad would build a lodge back of the house someday. He said, and I didn't. He never even told me about it. But our big elder that comes down, uh, Dave Crochet. So he's talking to Dave Crochet, and. Uh, and after he talked to Dave Crochet, Dave Crochet comes up to me and he says, Dave, what the hell are you waiting for? And I said, what do you mean, what are we waiting for? Your boy's vision. He says, you got to fulfill that vision, put that lodge back in your house, your people need it. And that's where, that's where it comes from. But I continue to do it for him and I, because he's visually impaired, he can't do the work the, like me and you could do it because he can't see, he can't function. That's like just good. Sure, he's in the lodge all the time. He's the one that sings the bear song in this lodge all the time. But anyway, that's that's the vision of this lodge. So I've been it's been going for a while. When I when I first vision when I first built this lodge, I don't know if you could see this, but maybe my my lodge was maybe enough. I was built it for maybe four or five persons in this lodge only, because they told me if you're gonna get disappointed if your lodge is never full. So, but you know the first I did two lodges in that small little lodge and. And the next time I had to take it down, I had to build, I had to build a little bigger for the people that came. And it, and, I, and I never did, the do it never did dwindle in size. That I always needed this size lodge for the people to fit everybody that is in here that ever wants to come. And it's like I said, it's free to come in here. As I don't tell anybody you got to come to the lodge, you know, force anybody. They come in here, they come and go. It is pretty. And that's the work of the grandfathers to tell them, okay, we need the door or whatever. I, and I don't ask the people, do you need a door? And I said, if, if the people don't cry for the, ask for a door, I don't open that door. And I just continue praying and ask the grandfathers and the harder it gets and goes. And we do this whole thing, process over for, like I said, four rounds. And we come out and it's it's really, the law of the bears. The bears are really strong, and it's it comes to the people and uh, help helps the people get release their anger, release their frustrations, release their you know they're lonesome because they're, they're lot like I I think I heard that lots in this community in the last couple of years we lost lots of loved ones, lots of grief going on. People don't know how to grieve no more, you know. So any of the people tell the, the grandfathers tell these persons what they have to do to grief and you even they tell me sometimes, okay, this person you gotta go help this person build this cheap eye fire or one night fire for this for him to release. That's where we get all that's where I get all my messages from the grandfathers and my teachers, lots of teachers come in this lodge that I like I figure I know a lot quite a bit because I did lots I did the sun dance, I did the warrior dances, I did all my dances and and I fasted and uh, to get where I am today, do with, with with these lodges and this, and I'm a carrier boot pipe, so I carry the, the spiritual pipe that I carry every day to smoke, and I also carry the uh, the Chibai pipe, which is our ancestors' pipe, what we what we you want to use when people pass on to the spirit world, and I was gifted with the story of the four days of journey that we go on to the go on in the spirit world and. And the people really, not artists, really starting to understand the importance of that Chibai fire when people go on. It helps them release their grief and it feels better for them to, you know, when they put their remains down at the graveyard or wherever they do with them. They feel better at putting them there, but whereas before they used to, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, like I said, I never called on nobody, I don't call that church, you know. But, you know, they used to take them to the church and bang, do the mass, and when they put them to the ground, they really had a hard time. But now with that with that Chibai fight, the understanding of the the Chibai, the fighter, how I explained the story, the four day journey of that that, that spirit that when it goes on and goes on and finally goes on to our happy hunting grounds, so we call lots of people call heaven, we the spirit world back in the spirit world, 
they find a real good relief of that fire. And I really, I really appreciate that. People tell me, oh, Dave, that's a real good ceremony. And, uh, you know, it's, you're, you're such a gifted man, and, uh, and uh, you know, it makes me feel good, makes me feel worse. But lately, you know, sometimes with so much going on, I, I, I'm, I don't know, I'm not getting tired of it, but, you know, somebody died again. Oh, I got to go to work again. And, you know, but here comes David. David's, there, I don't know, uh, that, that's my feeling, but it's not, that's to work with the grandfather. The grandfather's got me this job. That, like, I listen to what the grandfathers tell me to do with my pipe and uh, boot my pipes. And, uh, you know, if I got to do the pipe there, I got to do it. And I, I don't say, I never say no to them. I got, I'm pretty well devoted to that pipe. And when that pipe tells me to go, I go. And uh, either one, the Chibai or the spiritual pipe. You know, they, they tell me, I, I, there's good fishing, there's good fishing night tonight. Well, but there's a lodge also. And so the lodge guy asked me to go to the lodge. Well, there's more fish in that ocean. I could fish some more after, but I'll, I'll go to the lodge instead where all my friends are all enjoying themselves. But, but uh, that's, that's how I work today. I don't, I, I barely, barely refuse anything doing with the fires and the chi bikes and the fires, whatever they were gonna do. But anyway, this is the, how the lodge works and this is the lodge that we built. It's pretty strong yet. My brother, when he built it, I, we used to use willow before. But and then he told me about the tamarack, how tamarack just hardens a lot more and more strength. And there's more strength in that tamarack. It's, it's more strong and it's just that's what the bear he wants. Something that's permanent and that's what it is here. Each year, some some years we'll, we'll we'll smell it like if it's getting too, you know, musky, oily, or um, like you know, sometimes it gets moist. You smell it, so we come in. You know, smell it. We'll take them all in blankets. We'll wash them and we'll take it apart and we'll put it back up to give then we'll piece it again. Yeah. So with that, I'm gonna come out and we could explain more out there after. Okay. Yep. If you want, whatever you want. No. Like I said, this lodge was given, given to us. For, it's not my lodge, you know. It's it's the people's lodge, and I always try to explain that to the people. You know, it's not my lodge. You guys got to look after this lodge. You know, if you guys want lodge, you guys got to bring wood. Go pick up. Go go pick up the wood. Don't worry, pick up the grandfathers. I'll pick up the grandfathers. Can you talk a little bit how? What? Like your parents didn't have a lodge, right? No, 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 so no. this wasn't taught to you when no, you were a child. No, no, no. teachings later in life. Yep, yes. About that? Okay, when I, when I first, well, I, well, I, I guess when I sobered up when I was, they sent me to the treatment center. You know, I said, okay, I'll, I'll go. Like, I was, I was bought up a Roman Catholic, just like everybody else in the reserve, and uh, there's lots of, uh, I, I still baloney about the, the church because you're forced to do it in the whole works. Like my mom and dad forced me to go to that church through that and that, right? But when I went to the treatment center, I saw lots of my brothers and sisters go to, you know, go to the treatment center and say, oh yeah, they're good for a couple couple months, couple of weeks, whatever. And then they're back at it again. I said, I could do that too, I said. So I went away for that 29-day treatment center in, up in Blind River where I got connected with tobacco. When I, when I first got that tobacco from that that pipe carrier that he offered me that tobacco and he told me what to do with the power of that tobacco, when I first really got that pipe tobacco, I really knew that, how strong that tobacco was and what tobacco was, you know, and I, I something must have hit me there because, you know, I got, I released all my, all my wrongdoings, all my baloney I did when I was drinking and drugging and everything else. And I give that to the grandfathers, you know. When I came home, I was blessed with uh, the people around me. There was my brother, Basil, good child, Prady, Prady, my elder down there, who was, who was one of my teachers. They kept calling me into the lodges, and the more lodges, more lodges, and, and at the same time, I was going with AA. But AA always goes back in your past, okay? You got you always thinking about yesterday, what you did yesterday, but that wasn't my life. So I was going like, I was doing pretty good. I thought I was doing good, but I was going crazy because I couldn't find work. I had to quit my job. I had a little job cutting line. I had to quit that job because my boss drank more than anything. And then 
So I quit my job that one day and then I, I was just going crazy, you know. People are saying, Dave, if you have to go back the other way, go back the other way. Go drinking if you want to work. And I said, no. So I pulled my counselor back up in Blind River and he asked, I explaining to him what's going on. And he said, you know what, Dave, you're telling me everything. You're going to lodges, you're going to AA meetings, you're doing this, you're doing that. But you never told, you never did one thing that you always talked about at, at the, had treatment, like I said, you go out in the bush and, you know, enjoy the bush. He says, that's what you have to do. So that day, I, I left home. I never even told my wife where I was gone. I just jumped on my truck and I left. So I went out in the bush. Back there, we made a little sacred fire. And I I was given instruction back there. He says, you know what, I, I said, I'm going crazy with this, all this AA and all this the treatment. Which way I got a fool? I'll go give him fuels here. Uh, do I go forward or I, do I stay digging into my past and my frustrations? And the grandfather told me then, and he says, you know, Dave, he says, which way are you doing right now? He says, and I said, well, I'm in the bush. Well, that's your native way. That's, that's where you got to continue. So I left, I left my A. I went to, I went that week, that couple of weeks, I went to my A meetings. I told my friends that, okay, brothers, I'm, I'm leaving because I, I can't. I gotta make, I gotta follow this other path, but I'll, I'll continue being your brothers. But I can't. A is not my life. I said it's it might be it might be good for other people, but it wasn't wasn't good for me. So, but I continued doing this, and then finally, one the spring after the winter was past, I worked all winter, and I got I got pretty good after that. I left that sacred fire. I always got jobs and everything. But anyway, after that, that spring came up and everybody's talking about going fasting. And that's when I went myself. There was still snow on the ground. I went up to the mountain and I fasted four days by myself, you know. I asked for that direction that I wanted and and I had lots of visitors up there from my past, you know. And my greatest teacher is my mom. And she was a devoted, devoted Catholic, you know. But she was there, she said, told me, she says, uh, you got you got to do what you got to do. If if that's what you got to do, do it. But uh, you know, well, I'm not gonna call you wrong for what you're doing. And you know, and I don't. She said, just do what you got to do. And then, and I believe that she's she's my, one of my one of my strongest helpers is my mom. Because if someone doesn't believe in what you're doing or doesn't like what you're doing, they would not come visit you. Because every time I struggle in 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 my walk today, I walk. She'll come in to visit me in my dream and tell me what, how, how to help me doing. So I believe in that. My mother's my one of my strongest, strongest, strongest helpers in, in this way, in this walk that I walk today. And uh, you know, my all my brothers and sisters, they all they still go to church, but not me. This is my way of life that I carry today: the lodge, and uh, ceremonies, and everything else that I do in life. I um. I'm Ojibwe, and there are lots of guys say that you shouldn't be. You should be following the other teachings too. But I'm, I follow mostly the Ojibwe teachings that I, I could, I could carry. I'm not. I'm not a Mohawk. I'm not a Chippewa or whatever. You know, I'm a. I'm a Ojibwe from Pick River, and, uh, and I try to follow the teachings of our of our ancestors that have gone on, and that's why we do our our ancestor fighters, and that's where we get our directions from our ancestors. We talk to our ancestors even though they're in the spirit world, and they tell you what. What, what you have to do and what you you know what you should be doing. And uh, another thing I want to say in this little chit chat we're doing here is, you know, I go to this, this lodge where I get lots of my stuff. Where I I conduct a ceremony, but down the road there where my elder lives, I get lots of teachings from that that that, that lodge, where it tells me what what I'm doing wrong, what I'm not doing wrong. My sister passed. Few years back, you know, I, I never, I never, I did not put what the teachings that I received when my, when your family member dies, you must put your stuff away till you get a signal to carry on, pick up your pipes again. So I was in the lodge that when I was going to school, Tanner Bay, and I came back Friday night. There's probably had a lodge, but also Dave Christine had a four-day ceremony starting at the Turtle Lodge. So I was all hypered about that, and I want to go smoke my pipe, share my, share my stuff with the other other people. So, but I went into the lodge first with Prodi, and that's where my sister came to me. 
she told me, she says, Dave, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean, what am I doing? I said, I'm praying and asking for help so I could, you know, overcome your grief and the whole thing. What your teachings are, he says, you tell the people to, to drop your, your, your sacred items when you're grieving, and what you are you doing? You're still piping, you're, you're still, you know, you're still drumming and all that. He says, you gotta put your drum away, put your pipe away, till I tell you time to pick up your pipe again. And it, it sort of hurried me because, well, I can't use my pipe no more and I can't drum no more. I could drum with somebody else's drum, but not my own drum. I had to put that stuff away. I put it away. So I went down to that turtle lodge after I shared it with Dave Crochet. He says, well, Dave, you know what you got to do? He says, you got to put your pipe away in the oil thing. And, uh, and he says, that's to your sister again, we'll tell you. So I continued doing that stuff to the lodge anyway. Then in that following spring again, and Easter came again, we're doing a, a, a sweat down at Prodi's and we're going in there and, uh, and we're having a real hard time with drug and alcohol in the reserve then again, it was coming pretty strong. So everybody's wondering what to do and how to, how to overcome it. So my sister comes in the lodge again and she Tom talk to me in the lodge again. He says, well, he says, you, what did you got to do tomorrow morning? He says, you get all the warriors that believe in you to get them to go do your pipes. I look, I, you know, I never looked because I, I was just, I looked and I like, why, how could I do my pipe? You don't put it away. I said, she says, don't question me. Say, I told you, go get your pipe and go and do it. That, that was the same, <laughs> you know, go get your pipe and do, do that morning, Easter morning, pipe, sunrise before the sun comes up and ask the creator how to overcome our drug and drug problems. Like I said, that's, that's where I get lots of my ass, I, lots of stuff that I go through is through the lodges. And if, you know, it's sure it's dwindling now a little bit. The people are not, not as strong as uh, we were once were, like for the lodges, we used to have lodges here and there's reserve <coughs> maybe three to at least twice, two lodges a, a, a week. And now me and Prady, we got ours. We, we lucky if we go once a month. But like, and we, we look at our lives, we reflect on that. And you know what, ever since our lodges started going down, we started going down, the people started going. When I say we, I don't mean me going down, but lots of people are getting hurt because, you know, we're losing the lodges. Because when we do them lodges, we don't only do it for ourselves. We do it for the whole community. And you know, when we say we, even the people that still use drug and alcohol, you know, they, they still control their drug and alcohol, even, you know, even though they don't come to lodges, but the grandfather controls them. They don't, they don't go party, they don't go showing off as much as they, what, what they want to do in the lodges. You know, that's, that's how I look at my, my people today. And heavy, see, flies are getting bad now. But you know that's that's how that's how this lodges work. And then, like I said, I was born a Roman Catholic, and then uh, I I don't go to I don't go to that that a church. I go to the church out of respect that people ask me if I have to go there, like if I get invited to a wedding or a funeral, I'll go to that I'll go to there and do my do what they ask me to do, and that's it. But uh, the way of the church is not my way. It's and everybody asks me that question lots of times, you know. Will the church and our culture ever coexist? And I said, no, because, you know, what the church did to our people, you know, it, it, they shot this down. You know, they call it Buddhism or whatever you want to call it, but it, we call it witch doctors and everything else, and it's bad for the, our people. But, and me, I believe everybody's got this free will to do what they want to do. So why are they still, the church still shooting us down, you know? They're supposed to be acknowledging us, the Anishinaabe people, what, we're going back to our way of life, our grandfathers told us before, and yet they're still going to the t church that hurted them so much, you know? I'll just, just use one example, a residential school, what they did to our, our people in residential school. Sure, it was good for some people, they got the education and all that, they got the good, good footing and all things to carry on their life. But what did residential do, school do to our people, you know? Like today, I, I could understand Ojibwe pretty good, but 
I cannot, I don't got my tongue. I, I try sometimes and it works some words, some words come out. But, you know, but why would they go back to a place that hurts to hurt them? You know, it's, you know, I, I can't understand our people. But that, that's not for me to understand, that's for them, other people. Because each and every one of us got a, when we are conceived in our mother's womb, when we come from spirit into our mother's womb at conception, you know, the spirit came from there, wherever. It came into our, our being. We came, we, everybody's got a destination in life. And, and when we turn, we'll go back to spirit world. And, but, you know, I follow this way of life and I don't, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty strong in my way. I don't, I, I don't, I don't bend as easy as other people bend. And what I mean, I just pick the, oh, you got to follow this way of life. You got to do this and with this and that. So I don't, I'm not that kind of person. I just, I try to do it. When I do it, when I do something, I try to do it hundred percent. There's a, there's a word they call Dave knack, you know, it's good enough. Well, if <laughs> me, I don't. I don't believe it. If you're gonna do it, do it, do it, do it right, or don't, don't do it at all. And that's one of my mother's teachings too. That's like I said, my mother's pretty well my teacher. And one of my mom's favorite teachings is, do not take anything that don't belong to you. You know, it's what's not yours, it's not yours. And uh, that's one of my strongest teachings. Even if I see a, we're fishing lots of times in the boat, boat we we'll see nice hook something left there, or even. Uh, a coin, a guy picked it up. I said, how come you didn't pick that up? And I said, it's not mine, you know, simple. It's, it's, it's not mine, I wouldn't pick it up. It's somebody else might come looking for it or something. But that's that's other people, I don't, like I said, I, I wouldn't pick it up, it's not, it's not mine. Yeah. And it's, it's one of my mom's teachings was, you know, do not take anything that don't belong to you because it's, it's gonna hurt you. And then my mom's teachings, lots of them too, is just forgive, you know, forgive that, forgive everybody that did wrong to you and then and you'll be able to walk and forgive yourself lots. And a good example is that, I don't know, my, when I sobered up, but a year and a half after I sobered up, <coughs> the person that, the young man that uh, murdered my mom, okay, his grandfather passed. And everybody was worried with me because, you know, they know the drunk I was and how I, they most probably they figured I'd trigger that, I guess, I don't know, but, but you know what that happened? I got, I got to say what I said, to, I got to shake the hand of that person. I said, I forgive you, okay? I forgive you, so, you know, what you did. I know you were your, you know, I didn't tell them the whole story, but I just, I just want to say, shake your hand. I said, I'd like to forgive you for what you did to my mom. But that didn't give them, that, that doesn't give them the, okay, you're free to live anything you want. You gotta tell my mom, like if they'd ask me again, hey, if you let this person out of jail, you know, I said, no, my mom's still not back. Why should he be out of jail? I didn't tell him, take, you're not gonna take your sentence away. I didn't say take your sentence away. I just forgive you for what, what you did to my mom, you know? So that's my, that's my, my forgiveness then. You know, and I had those, some people doubted, they didn't like what I did there too because, you know, what are you, what is he doing forgiving that person that killed, did that to his mom? I had to do it for, so I could forgive myself for all the wrong doings that I did in my life, right? And I did it and I felt good after that. And I felt really good and I, you know, I, I don't, I don't hold any grudges. I just hope that person that did that to my mom finds some kind of way to, to someday to live the way he should be living. You know, but it seems to me I walk this walk and I, I do it. I don't do it for, for sure. Okay, yeah. lots of those, do, lots of people, do, you know, they, oh, there's a big ceremony coming on and the big cheese is coming on. So everybody comes down there and they, cause we do our pipes, you know, once a month down at the Turtle Lodge, me, Collette and some other guys, there's one, two, three, four pipes there. Mm -hmm. But when the big cheese comes down that, Pipes are all full, you know. Mm -hmm. I look around, holy man, yeah. So, but that's other people. I don't call them down. I'm glad they come, but I'd rather see them come when, when no one's around, also, mm -hmm. you know. But that's that's how they are. And like I said, I don't call no one down. That's that's their way. That's their walk. In my pipes, 
That's what I said. That's that's what I listen to by my pipe. My pipe tells me what what to say and what to do. You know, lots of people say you should do your pipe every, every morning and all that. But I, I just I offer my tobacco in the morning when I get up in the morning. I first thing I wake up. I, my bedroom is always facing the east, so I get up in the bedroom first thing in the morning. I wake up, look outside. Oh, we have a chimney glitch for allowing me to walk again today. Look, see what today brings. Yeah, and I'm going to show you one more thing over here. That's it's just our sacred fireplace. <laughs> I said, an elder told me, he says, you know, everybody's asking me how come I don't cut the grass in here. But you know, why cut all them grasses? That, that, that's nature, right? That's that's the gift of grandfathers. Cut the grass when when you need it. Don't cut it till it's ready to go. It don't take me a long more, maybe. Five, 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 ten minutes in the lawnmower, and it's all good to come and go in there again. But this is where I do our, our do our fire, sacred fire. Somebody needs a four-day fire, mm -hmm. I'll light it up in there, and I'll get them to get their wood and all that. We'll do our chi by fires in there. We'll put a cover over it some, when it's raining or something. But I don't let, I don't cut the grass until it's used, until it's ready to be used. Mm -hmm. I don't keep it looking nice, but it's that's that's nature. Why destroy nature if you don't have to? You know, but anyway, that's that's smooth. What I we had with the whole guys on the last interview. So okay.